So the frequency table gives information about the numbers of mice in some nests. So on the left hand side we've got the number of mice and frequency is just basically how many times these mice occurs. So you can say that for the first column, um, the number of mice is 5 and this occurs 4 times. So collected, collectively is like 5 times 4, so 20 mice altogether in the first column. And yeah, so on. Now at the bottom, the mean number of mice um, in a nest is 7. Work out the value of x. Okay, so the best way to do this is to firstly um, go through the mean procedure. So to calculate the mean, we need to make a new column called fx, where f is the frequency and x is the number of mice. So fx is essentially f times x. So we're going to go ahead and multiply all of these guys, yep. So let's do that first. So 5 times 4 is 20, and 6 times 13 is 78. The next one is 112. 8 times x, 8x. 9 times 6, 54. And so the mean is going to equal the total fx. So we're going to go ahead and add up all those values we found over the total frequency. So we need to add up this whole um, column here. So total uh, frequency. Now the total fx, if you add up all of these terms, you're going to get um, 264 plus 8x. So 264 plus 8x. And the total frequency, if you add up all of these, you're going to get 39 plus x. And we know that the, the mean is supposed to equal 7. Okay, now all you guys want to do is literally solve this part of the equation and find the value of x. Okay, so to do that, let's, let's go ahead and uh, multiply 39 plus x across. So we want to clear the fraction. So you're going to have 264 plus 8x equals 7 times uh, 39 plus x. 273 plus 7x and then finally just um, moving all the x terms on the left and the number terms on the right if we subtract 7x we're going to get 1x here Sub uh, subtract 264 you're going to get 9 so x equals 9 okay number 14 so Marcus plays two games of tennis for each game the property that he wins is 0 0.35 okay so we know straight off the bat for every single game is 0 0.35 of winning so literally write that down here now this means that the property of him not winning in other words losing would be um, 0 0.65 why because all properties must add up to 1 okay so that means the rest will be 0 0.65 yeah and that's it that's two marks right there now B work out the probability that Marcus wins at least one of the two games of tennis so if he's going to win at least a game, that means he could either win the first game, then lose the second game, or lose the first game, then win the second game, or because this is at least, he could win both games because that's still at least winning a game. So we write down the probability option, so that's win the first game, lose second, lose the first, win the second, or win both games. And then you literally just find the probability. So, so this symbol I'm writing is a nice way of keeping track of what you're, what you're doing. So winning then losing, so that's 0 0.35 times 0 0.65. So 35 and 65. Losing will be 65 times 35. And winning both times will be 35 times 35. So when you work them all out, you then have to sum them up, yeah? So let's do it. So 0.35 times 0.65, that'll give you... 0 0.2275 so you do that again here and then last one 0 0.35 times itself will be 0 0.1225 and then the total that means the total probability so any of these three options can happen so you have to add them up so plus 0 0.2275 times 2 so that means the total probability of him winning at least game would be 5775 yeah and that's it guys that's literally um, done Okay, number 15. So the diagram shows a trapezium. Okay, so we're actually given the area of the trapezium formula in um, the front of the booklet. And the formula is something like half times A plus B times the vertical height. Okay, so A and B represents the top um, vert uh, parallel lines, so A and B. And this is the vertical height. Okay, so we have all the piece of information here. Now, all measurements shown on the diagram are in centimeters. 
the area of the trapezium is 133 centimeters squared. So this is again the formula of the area. Yeah. Show that you can make this quadratic equation. So when they give you something like this, you literally have to pretty much apply what you know from the given information and somehow form an equation and then simplify it and it will look like this quadratic. So let's use the info, yeah? So if, since we know, since we have the area of the trapezium formula, we can go straight into it. So replace A with 133. So the area equals half times A plus B, so X plus 5 plus 3X minus 2. So adding, adding them up, the X has become 4X. 5 plus minus 2 becomes plus 3 and then times the height times 2x minus 3 okay so that's a quick way of doing it now we just got to simplify all of this so first thing you want to do is uh, just multiply 2 to get rid of the half so times this by 2 you get 266 equals all of these okay so now we got to expand this bracket yeah so we're gonna have 266 equals so open this quadratic, you can have 4x times 2x, 4x times minus 3, 3 times 2x, and 3 times minus 3. So let's do 4x times 2x, that'll give us 8x squared. 4x and minus 3 gives us minus 12x, which makes plus 6x, and 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. And now you just tidy this up. So let's, um, so you're going to have 266 equals 8x squared, minus 12x plus 6x is minus 6x, minus 9 and of course you can just look at the answer if you subtract 266 across you're going to end up with minus 275 so yeah we've pretty much proven it so yeah just make sure you you always write it down yeah okay good now b so find the value of x all right so in other words just solve this quadratic equation so we're going to use a quadratic formula yeah and a quadratic formula is also given in the, in the front of the booklet which is x equals minus a plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Where a is the first um, value here, which is a, b is the, the value of um, minus 6, and c is the value of uh, minus 275. Alright, so let's plug it in. So you're going to have basically minus b end up becoming plus 6 plus minus the square root of. Now b squared, so minus 6 squared is literally just positive 36 minus 4 times 8 times minus 275. So a quick note is to always wrap up your, your values in a bracket, yeah? Over 2 times 8. And then just let's put this in the formula, yeah? So in your calculator, you're going to have 6 plus da, 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 36. And then you'll get either x equals 6.8. 2, 5, if you use the positive root, or if you put a minus, you're going to get minus 5.5. .5. So only one answer is correct, because it says find the value of x, i.e. singular, yeah? And because we're working with lengths, the only reasonable answer would be the positive value, because you can't have negative lengths. So it'll be 6.25. That's it, guys. All right, number 16. So the diagram shows two mathematically similar vases, A and B. Now, the, this term mathematically similar literally means that we have pretty much identical shapes, except one of them will be proportionally bigger than other. So we're only concerned about some common scale factor, yeah? So we need to find what the scale factor could be. Okay, so when you determine that, you can literally figure out the length, volume, and area of the next shape. So let's have a look at this example, yeah? So we've got A, the first shape, has a volume of 405, and B has a volume of 960. Okay, so before we do anything else, we can relate the, the volume, yeah? We can say that the scale factor, and because we're working a volume, it will be power 3, equals the ratio of the volume of B over the volume of A. If this was an um, area, which they have next bit, because area is a two-dimensional shape, it will be n to the power 2, equals the area of um, shape B, over the area of shape A. <laughs> Alright, I can see there's two A's here. Yeah? So so once so I should actually write surface area of B over surface area of A. Okay, so now all you have to really do is just figure out the scale factor n from the first equation, plug it to find the scale factor to solve the second equation. So let's do it. Okay. So that means using the first set of equation here, we have the volume of B and the volume of A. So therefore n cubed equals 
960 over 405 and then literally cube root this answer and you will get 4 over 3 so this is actually the scale factor so we can say that this shape is 4 thirds bigger than A volume wise now therefore if you got this this um, scale factor we can literally figure out the surface area of A because we have the surface area of B which is 928 so using what we know so we can say from the second equation n squared equals the surface area of b which is 928 which is here over the surface area of a and remember we know what n squared is is 4 over 3 squared so essentially we're solving this bit then all you have to do really is literally solve for sa so multiplying sa across and dividing 4 thirds squared across you're going to have a surface area of 92a over 4 thirds squared again put this in your calculator and you'll get um 522 that's it guys that's all you do so f is the function such that fx equals 4 minus 3x work out f5 for this one you literally just replace x with 5 because that's what actually happened so this means that the function at the point 5 is now 4 minus 3 times 5 and putting this in the calculator, well, this is going to give you minus 11. These kind of marks are easy, yeah? So when you do questions like this, just replace x with what you have. Now, next one, g. g is the function such that gx is 1 over 1 minus 2x. Find the value of x that cannot be included in any domain of g. Again, domain literally means values of x that you are allowed to have. Now, a common rule for these kind of questions is that it could either give you a fraction or a square root function. The rule is, is that if you're dealing with a fraction, you cannot, the denominator cannot be zero because you can't divide any number by zero. So we can say that one minus two X cannot be equal to zero. So that's exactly what the question wants. It wants to find that particular value X that we're not allowed to do. So solving this equation, so we're going to have, we can plus two X across. You've got one can't equal two X. Dividing by 2, which is 1 over 2, can't equal x. So x can't equal half. Okay? That's that's the value x we cannot we, we're not allowed to have. Now part C. Okay, so work out Fg minus 1.5. So what this tells us is that we have to plug G into F. That's what Fg means. G goes inside F. So taking this G function, we're gonna pop it into F. So when you say pop it in, it literally means replace the x bit of f and put this g inside so we're going to have f g x equals 4 minus 3 times 1 over 1 minus 2 x and now this is straightforward because it actually gives you a value it gives you minus 1.5 so now you're going to replace this x of minus 1.5 so our final answer is going to be something like 4 minus 3 1 over 1 minus 2 times minus 1.5 and then, then literally just pop this in the calculator <clears throat> and if you do that you actually get 3.25 okay number 18 so it tells us that we have p equals a over m minus x and each of those three letters have been rounded up to either one significant figures two significant figures or the nearest tens now to have a look at this carefully that means each of these values was probably some decimal or different values before so x, for example, has been rounded to 8. So it could have been anywhere between 7.5 up until just before 8.5. For the value of a, it could have been anywhere between, we could say, 4.55, because rounding that up will give you 4.6, or just b before 4.65. So again, it all kind of has the same trend. It's always going to be a 5 and ends, by the way. So for m equals 20, this could have been anywhere between... And let's think about if you're going to round it to 20, the highest it could have been is before 25 or 15 and above. As always, yeah? Again, 5 on both sides. So now the actual question wants us to calculate the lower bound of P. So the lower bound of P meaning the, how could you possibly minimize this result? Well, if you're dividing or subtracting, the best way to minimize the result, if you have a lower bound result and you divide it against an upper bound result, why? Because the bigger the denominator and the smaller the numerator, the smaller your final answer will be. So in other words, we need to find a lower bound for A. So the lower bound for A is clearly this value here. 
However, on the denominator, we need to find an upper bound. And again, because you're subtracting, to get the, the biggest bound, you need to have the, the, the greatest distance. To get the greatest distance between m and x, we need to maximize the m value, get the biggest m value, and subtract it from the, the smallest x value. You can see that the difference between 25 and 7.5 is going to be much bigger than the difference between 15 and 8.5 or, or any other combination. So these are the three values you want. So therefore, we can say the, the lower bound of p is going to equal, so the lower bound, um, so the, the a value is going to be 4.55 over m minus x, so 25 minus 7.5. Yeah, and then. And then in our calculator, if you put in, you should get 0 0.26. Yeah, I think that's it.